This is Real Women, celebrating women in film, but today we're celebrating an independent filmmaker that I personally adore. His name is Dale Nevin. Uh, we were in a challenge together. He made a fantastic film called House in Time, uh, and he's getting a theatrical release, which I'm super excited about, at the Galaxy Theater, and every penny of this, these ticket sales will be going to Friends of Parkinson. And so we're going to talk to Dale and see how he... He did this in such a short period of time. Hey, Dale. So what I wanted to do was I wanted you to talk to me about your log line, about the movie. Like, what is your log line and why is this movie important to you? Okay. The log line is uh, uh, a woman recovers from a nervous breakdown. She returns to her childhood home to take care of her mother who has dementia. And she discovers that sometimes when she's crossing through the doorways into rooms, she crosses back into her past. And, uh, and she becomes obsessed with uh, trying to prevent a childhood tragedy, um, but maybe at the risk of ruining her future. So why did you think this is an important story to tell? Was it the dementia part? Um, not, not as much on the dementia which you find out more when you when you see the movie, but um, mm -hmm. it was, oh the the biggest reason is more about uh, that the theme of that no matter how bad your past has been or no matter how you've screwed up your life, that doesn't determine what your future can be. That so you, you can, can always change. You can still future. have a good future. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's very cool. Now, is that personal to you? Yes, definitely. I mean, I look back at all the things, uh, all the m mistakes I've made or, or things that haven't uh, gone right and, you know, hold on to that hope of, uh, of not letting that stuff keep me from, from moving forward and, and, you know, achieving what I want to. Right. So I wanted to uh, have everybody take a look at Dale's trailer. I think you guys will be really impressed. I mean, you cannot believe the quality of this trailer in this movie. Uh, for such a low budget. And I think we attribute that to uh, the support that you got for the Lucky Sevens. Yes, definitely, definitely. That the With the last film and then this film, um, that's the most amazing thing for me, which I'm sure it was for you too, is the people that came on board to volunteer their time to, to work, to be a part of the movie and all the hard work they had to do that it's just it's just overwhelming you know with, that the people that you know came aboard so yeah so let's go look at let's go look at the trailer and show everybody how great it looks Des, are you having hallucinations i think it, it's the house childhood memories or something i'm like having flashbacks ah! i've been traveling through time what ah! it's like a doorway through time Wow, that was amazing. Really, really good. Super excited. I never got to watch the whole movie. I only got to watch like the first third. So I kind oh. of was because I had they were showing my film right after and I was like, they were like rushing me out. But so I'm super excited to see it. Plus, I get to see the updated version from when we had our first premiere. Right, right. Yeah, and that's I, I where... wrote... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I don't know if anybody knows this, but Dale was the first one to uh, fill two theaters at the Galaxy for the premiere of the Lucky Sevens, which I thought was pretty exciting. I mean, we're talking about he goes to his church and he's telling everybody, look, and they all came out for you. And I thought that was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of 
some of a lot of them are coming back. I think for the yeah, show. I think that's great. I I was just going to touch on the dementia part. So um, I have that going on in my family, and so does Mike Conway, who we're both also filmmakers for the Lucky Seven. And I feel like uh, I know your charity's Parkinson's, but um, it's such a it's almost like an epidemic dementia right now. You know, and right. I think that that's a really important subject to tackle. I know you just touched on it, but I felt like it, it's very important because, you know, when somebody has dementia in your family, it's just devastating. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't imagine, the, especially, well, I don't know what your situation is, but especially what Mike's going through and stuff. Yeah, so we love you, Mike Conway, and uh, he has yep. his movie Drone Down, and Dale has both my trailer, Rogue Angel, and Mike Conway's Drone Down trailer uh, before his film. And I think, uh, so I wanted to know why you picked Friends for Parkinson's for your charity, where all the money for that weekend is going to Friends of Parkinson's. So tell us why you picked that. Right. Well, truthfully, it was uh, Jeremy Settles who picked it. Yeah, he already had a connection with them, and uh, so he he's the one that picked it. But it's a it's, it's definitely a great uh, charity, a great uh, great thing to give to. Well, I think too, what's so great is that here you got your fourth showing of House and Time, and you've donated to two tr charities. I mean, I don't know how much more of a community person that you can be that you did such a thing, and I think that's wonderful. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I think that uh, it's super exciting to watch it. I have a feeling that people are going to go into that theater and they're going to see all these high-end movies. I saw your picture you took and it was like all these Hollywood blockbusters and there's House and Time. I mean, that had to feel great on your poster with all of them. Yeah, it did. I was actually over there buying a couple tickets and, and uh, I saw it pop up in the, the, the trailer, the poster area. So, yeah. And then when's your red carpet night? Because I know it's the 20th through the 21st. 22nd. So it's the 22nd. So it's the 20th to 22nd weekend at the Galaxy Theater on Maryland Parkway in Las Vegas. And uh, do you know what the showtime, first showtime is on the 20th? 20th uh, is 2 p.m. Okay. And then the red carpet night, though, is um, the 21st. Right, twenty first Saturday at uh, seven. Well, carpet will start at six. Showing starts at seven. Okay, and that's. I mean, that's amazing. So, and I think too that you know we have to do. We have to let people understand that there are so many independent filmmakers and independent filmmakers that I have interviewed, and if they could just buy a ticket. I mean, even if you can't make it, buy a ticket because you're giving money to Parkinson's. I mean, you're doing something good for Cherry and you're also supporting another independent filmmaker. And I think uh, just in the Las Vegas community, there's over 5,000 people here. I don't know why they wouldn't want to be part of something that's so great because w if we elevate each other, we all grow together. Right. Yes, because it, possibly it could... If it does well, it could open the door for other local films to get that kind of release, you know, so. Yeah, and it's super important. And the other thing, too, about getting a release at the Galaxy Theater is that other theaters might go, wow, what's this film all about? And then they might want to pick it up for their theatrical release. So, I'm, you know, the hope and prayer is that people will do that for you. Right, right. I mean, so at, at first, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, you know, at first we thought we were just going to be getting one screening on Friday, one screening on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then when they gave us the list, you know, of a whole full set of showings, you know. So. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really amazing. I can't, I don't even think there's another film out there that's doing this right now. That's in this, in this range. Right, right. Yeah. So I think, you know, you could be make you could be making overnight stars and not even realize it. You know, all we gotta do is create a buzz. So come on guys, we gotta create a buzz for Dale's film. Uh so I want you to tell me what you know, how you picked your lead actress, uh, Mindy Ginkerson, because she is a, an amazing actress and I think she really can carry that film. Right, right. Yeah. Um it's 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 interesting because I uh 
I had met Mindy a couple times at a couple of festivals, but I had never seen her acting, never seen anything. And it, it was weird. It was just when I was, uh, it might've been a God thing because it was when I was working on the story, um, when I was the story and the lead character, her face just kept popping up in my mind. And I was like, I got to check her out. So uh, uh, I, I believe I contacted her through Facebook. Um, and said, do you have some reels that I can see? And so I watched her reels and, and I, I, I saw something in there. I was like, I think she's got it. I think, and I just always had this, I, I hadn't had this happen before, but I just, I just felt like that she was it, that I just knew that she was it. Like even before I saw her reel, but after I, uh, saw her reel, I, I saw some it factor in there. And then we met a couple times for lunch and stuff. And then uh, she still had to audition against other, we wanted to give everyone, everyone a fair shake. So she still had to audition like everyone else. And, and uh, by the end of the auditions, uh, we were, I was confirmed in my belief that she was the one. So. Yeah, I've actually, I think the thing I like about Mindy is that she's got that subtlety about her. It's just something that I don't even think you can teach an actor. It just has to be something about them that's just got that real, like, she brings you inward with her subtlety. And I think that's what I really adore about her. Like, and she's, and she's a really great person. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just a dream to work with. And her, uh work ethics, her, her, uh, the other thing I liked is that she's always trying to improve, do anything classes, any, anything to, to improve her craft and, and just always wants to be better and is willing to go the extra mile, you know? So, so how many days of casting did you do or did you do it online? How'd you do it? No, I did it. We did it in person. Um, trying to think, remember i think it was two days mm -hmm. um we see so we had, did have some callbacks so anyways it was around two or three days with callbacks i believe mm -hmm. and did you have your whole team with you when you did it or was it just you i had tamia the script supervisor um the sound guy that was another thing the sound guy uh he usually sound guys you know don't come out to the auditions and everything but he was like no, I, I want to, I'm willing to come. And so the sound guy too. And we had a couple of uh, PAs and I think that was it. I hope I didn't miss anyone, but. Well, I think too, um, you know, we're talking about a time of COVID. And so, right. you know, you couldn't have a whole bunch of people in the room. Um, and then, you know, I mean, we tried to be as careful as possible for sure. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people weren't coming out because, um, you know, I did all mine online. Pretty much. Right, right. I made him go back and retape. Like, I, I think you're looking for this role, but can you go retape? <laughs> you know? And then, yeah. like, and, then I, and then I sent everything to everybody because we were all so separated. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, casting is super important. I feel like your cast is really good. The little girl's cute. Yeah. Who is that? That's uh, uh, Sophia Bat Batness. Mm hmm. And you and, found her in local Las Vegas? Uh, yes, yes. So yeah, I've seen her in a couple of things. Huh? I've seen her in a couple oh, of things. Oh, right, right. Yes, she, she has been. And uh, something else, uh, yes. Yeah, she's been staying busy. Something before ours, probably. And then she's been doing stuff since, of course. Yeah, and so what was your key thing besides Mindy that, that you were looking for in your other cast members? The key thing? In, in, uh, you mean the, like the next, uh, in, like in all the roles or like the next, yeah, two roles? like what, what do you look for? Like me personally, I look for somebody who can, I can talk to, and uh, because sometimes it doesn't, they don't have to have the best audition, but if I feel like they're willing to, uh, adjust for me and then play, like I like actors who play, and I also like actors that say, you know, um, I, I had this idea and I wanted to try it because I always let right. them try it because, right. uh, because, you know, I, I try not to be narrow minded because I always feel like it's a team effort. And I always feel like I want to say 80% of the time theirs is better. 
you know, because yep. and they and they like that because I, I mean, I might say they just like to I, we experiment a lot. We probably waste a lot of time doing that. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Cause I'm a, a lot on that end too. Um, I definitely, I want someone that's, that's flexible. That's and, uh, cause one of the things I told the actors is I said, I don't, when you're memorizing your lines, I don't want you coming up with a performance and memorizing a performance. Cause we want to, I, that's the one big thing is I want to do experiment during rehearsals and even when we are shooting and for them to be free and just in the moment, and and then we'd make adjustments from there, you know, on different takes, you know. Yeah, I like to play. I mean, I'm an actor, yeah. so I like to play. I like to because when you play too, and and you know, you're you're never supposed to deliver the same lines the same way anytime. I mean, if, if that's a good acting coach is, yeah, you cannot say the line by verbatim in the same rhythm every time because then that's what it sounds like. I am a robot. I am saying at the same time. I know in editing, they editing, you just should not move so much. You know, editing it's all what? about the, you're not supposed to move so much. You know, you're only supposed to move when you actually need to move. You don't want to be bouncing around when you're on as an actor. You want to have that stillness so that you can capture the actor's inner soul through their eyes. You know, right, so I right. Think that, but that's what I think. That's what I like about Mindy is I really feel that in her. I feel it, her pulling me in with her eyes. You know, right. Oh yeah, I've had uh, some other people mention her eyes. That you know, just which is key, like the old phrase of. Uh, the eyes are the window to the soul. So, yeah. I, I really think that's true. So what is it about this film that you want people to know that uh, right before they go and see it? Like, why is it important for them to see this film? I asked the question, so I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm not always good with questions, especially tough ones. But uh, um <laughs> Uh, I just think uh, a lot of people from the, like from when we had our test screening premiere back in February, I, I just had a lot of people uh, connect with it, um, some in different ways. Um, so I think it's, I, uh, I just uh, think again with the, like the theme of it, um, that's important to me of, uh, cause I always wanted to, make films about uh, a person who, who, uh, no matter, again, no matter what, what your, what your past, no matter what mistakes you've had, that, uh, it's not too late for you to change, to, to, to have a, a future, you know, that's. Okay. So here's a tough question. Okay. What gave you the filmmaking bug, Dale? It was, it's a simple answer. That one was uh, Star Wars. When I saw Star Wars, that's what, that's when I knew what I wanted to be. And then Before, how, when did you, when did you start? I started, see, see, I've been on a long journey. I started when I was 13. Um, and uh, that was around the age when I saw Star Wars and uh, with a Super 8 camera and, and making short films and, uh, Editing on the, I don't know if you or anyone else has seen the Fablemans, uh, the Spielberg film, but uh, somewhat like the thing he had, the little, except mine was all hand cranked. He might have started out with the hand crank, but, um, and then <laughs> splicing it with tape. And Wow. So, so you've been making films for how long now? Since I was 13. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I say? How old you are? That's funny. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I think, uh, I mean, for me, innately being a filmmaker comes from because my parents were very into acting when I was a kid, and my dad was and and my dad was always the villain in a in a melodrama, and my mom was always the leading lady in every play in town, and uh, so we were always in the theater, and so I just started doing a lot of background work, or then they would put me on stage, and I felt like, and then I'd always done that from all the way through high school. I was either. I was either the stage manager. I was either, I was always doing something. I was in the, in the plays. And then um, I really didn't really get into actual film until my daughter uh, started doing a, a film with a, a filmmaker um, 
I was called Bubblegum and Broken Fingers. And I was like, wow. And then I talked to him and I said, I had the story idea. And he's like, yeah, let's shoot it. And I was like, are you sure? Because he had like a whole crew. And I was like, it was just an idea. He goes, well, write it down. And I did it. And then it was like, I just kept going, you know, because yeah. I think the thing about filmmaking is that it, you it's really creative. And the most creative thing that I believe that you have done is you made a fil feature film for $7,000, which you know, I mean, 25 years, I mean, it, it's almost 25 years ago. Like if someone asked Robert Rodriguez, you know, he made it, he could have said, I made my film for a thousand because that's what it felt like when we were out there doing it. It's like I had a thousand dollars and I had to beg on the street to get locations. And it's really tough. Right, right. And he you recently, know? a couple of years ago, he, he redid, he did another $7,000 film for the anniversary the whatever it was 25th anniversary of uh with his son his, yeah 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 i watched um, that documentary okay yeah, uh, the, yeah. Oh, the other thing you said that was interesting that uh my my mom and dad um they met in a play my dad was the villain she was the heroine uh -huh, and, uh, uh -huh. it was the first time he had ever acted or been in a play um, yeah but my mom yeah, my mom always, dragged my dad he, she what my mom dragged my dad into the theater because he was uh, not a theater guy. He was always a sports guy, but my mom always was doing it. She's playing this lady lady. So she would drag him because they needed men in a musical. And so they need to carry women, you know, be strong guy. My dad right. used to play water polo. So they, he was just basically this bronze God. And then eventually he just became a villain. And that's kind of uh, where my movie came in was uh, I, it, it's melodrama. I have a villain. I have a sweet young thing. The only, the only adverse person I have is uh, the lead, you know, Jackie. She's kind of the, she's kind of the heroine as far, you know, she's the savior. So, right, right. Yeah. 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 So, and I think too, uh, when I watched your film and I also watched your trailers, I felt like um, you really upped the stakes, you know, like I felt like I, every time I go into an acting class or I watch a, a clip, it's like, and the thing that always gets me is when someone says up the stakes, my mind always goes, oh, my God, that's what every film needs, because it, the storyline can be great and everything. But if you're if the actors aren't upping the stakes or if you aren't upping the stakes on what's going on, then you lose your audience. And I really felt like you up the stakes, which okay, is super important. Like, I didn't realize how important it was, but it's super important, you know, right, right. Because it makes people feel something. And, that, and as filmmakers, that's really what we want. I mean, cinematography can be fantastic, which yours looks so good. Like, I love the color of your film. I love the color grade of it. I, it looks amazing. It really does. Right. And that's all due to Ryan. Uh-huh. And what's Ryan's name? Uh, Ryan Galvin. Okay. He did all the color grading for you? Um, I, I did the color grading, but I didn't... I didn't uh, have to do too much he you know he had a look he wanted to shoot with and mm -hmm. we didn't really have to change too much after we uh shot it I, but I, you know, yeah i feel like the color gave it kind of a supernatural feel okay yeah he gave it a like in the we had a different look for the present and the past mm -hmm. and uh the the present had a slightly has a slightly greenish tint to it and a little more uh a little more dull and then the past is a little more brighter and so if you were to go talk to young dale who's watching star wars and and to tell him about the future of what you think is <laughs> what it would be what would what advice would you give him uh to make his first feature film or any film right right um well it's not necessarily um <laughs> sorry just, <laughs> go ahead just, yeah just feature <laughs> film but um I would give him the advice of make as many, many, many short films or whatever as you can. Um, uh, uh, I made a decent amount of short films, but I got hung up with, cause it, it was when digital video was coming along and stuff. And, and I wanted, I was trying to make it as much as possible look like film, you know, and I got too hung up on, on trying to get that look of film, which I love. But it would have been better if I would have done even more, just more films instead of being slowed down by that. So the main thing I would say is just making as much as you can. Right. I always feel like um, 
I mean, with me, you know, because I didn't go to film school, although I'm in film school now, but I didn't go to film school. And I felt like, um, I feel like I'm always at trial and error and I never know what I'm going to be able to do until I actually do it. So, you know, when you tell your younger self that I would tell my younger self, stop being afraid and just do it because it's okay to fail. Right. Yeah. You I was going to say, don't be afraid to make crap because, um, cause you're gonna, yeah. <laughs> And there's always, you know, I always found like even in my Super 8 films, I would do something that would be this one shot and I'd be like, oh, that's that's cool. Not just not that it's just a shot, but like the feeling it gave you or whatever, you know, you, there's usually at least at least one thing you see in there that that works. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, that, or one thing or a bunch of things that don't work, you know, and then trying to figure out, OK, well, why does this work? Why doesn't this work? You know, and yeah. Hey, so uh, when you first started making films, like, did you ever try to emulate anybody besides uh, George Lucas? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really try to emulate anyone. Um, but uh, that that would be a good thing, though, I think, is uh, like with the, the, the painters, you know, they're in the Renaissance. They would they would copy the master's paintings. And that's a good thing to do. I never did that, but like those kids that made a a re a re uh, shot for shot of Raiders of the Lost Ark, because if you if you redo what someone else has done, you're probably gonna you know learn a lot in that process of you know yeah. or, or, I, or you know go ahead. I was just gonna say you you learn the pattern. It's like right screenwriting. You know, you have a great idea, but, you know, you almost have to, you have to know what the pattern is. If you're writing a film, then it has to be a film pattern. If you, if you write for television or a sitcom, they all have their own pattern. And I think that, uh, I mean, that's what I have learned over time is that, oh, there's a pattern to this. Like there's literally like a cut and paste. Oh, you know, the establishing shot. Okay. Cause you want to create the mood or let people know where it's at. And so there is a definite pattern for it. Uh, so uh, you, you need to look for those things. And I think uh, watching a lot of movies, even a lot, a lot of bad movies. I think I learned more watching bad movies than yeah. Like good movies. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely you know? agree. Cause uh, uh, I remember sitting through, uh, I know who killed me. I think that's what it was called with, Lindsay Lohan, I thought it was a pretty bad movie. But what I like to do when I'm watching a bad movie is trying to, while you're watching it, try to figure out, okay, well, how could have I improved this? What could, you know, and figuring out, you know, rewriting it while I'm watching it, you know? Well, yeah, it's how Quentin Tarantino did it. He okay, was working yeah. in a video store. And then every time somebody went in the movie, he would tell them, well, this is really good, but I would have done this, this, and this, and this. Or he would say, this is really bad, but it could have been really good if you did this, this, this. And then somebody went up to him and said, you know, you should really make a movie. <laughs> and so that's pretty much how he got the bug was he was like, oh, maybe I should. <laughs> right, right. You cool. know, and, and I love Quentin Tarantino's movie. They're, they're a little off key. And um, I always feel like... Um, I feel like it's even though there's a lot of uh, drama in his movies, it's also he's got a little fun, humorous stuff that goes in there if you pay it close attention, you know. Right, right. Yeah, he's a little quirky, and I like that. <laughs> yeah. So I just want everybody to know about Dale. Dale. Dale has done me a huge bunch of favors during this whole Lucky Sevens, and I didn't really know him. And I have to tell you that because it was my first feature film, I was literally like falling apart and i didn't even know dale and i've got my family inside i think it was like mother's day or something and then i called him on the phone and he like he's like look <laughs> you just need to take a deep breath and just keep going and not you know and 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 just tackle every problem and that really helped me because sometimes somebody you don't know you will listen to better than somebody you do know <laughs> for whatever reason that is you know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 You just, especially when you're shooting the film, you know, I just, there's, cause there's things that happen and then you can't do anything about it. So you just, you have to go with the flow in the moment and just, just go. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really important to be able to be, you have to be creative in the moment. I don't care yeah. how much planning you've done and yes, you need to plan and plan and plan and plan. But at the end of the day, things change in the minute. The light changes, 
Somebody doesn't show up to set. Somebody gets sick. You don't know, but you still have to pay everybody to be there or you got to feed them or whatever you have to do. You've set that time. And so you need to make sure you're creative in that moment. And I think that that's what we thrive on. <laughs> right. And then sometimes there you, you come up with better things because of it, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. So, yeah. So basically this uh, interview is about uh, making sure that everybody understands that you know, he's raising money for Friends of Parkinson's with his movie House and Time, which got a theatrical release. It was a $7,000 film, people, that the only reason that Dale got it done was because he had the support of his Las Vegas community. So please, please come out and support Dale. Please support House and Time. Mindy's amazing in it. Um, I just can't say enough about how hard it is to make a feature film with such little money because most people and a lot of people did walked away from the challenge because they were like yeah i don't know how you're gonna do it <laughs> but we did it and i'm so yep. proud of us for doing that would i do it again i would probably if i didn't know what I, I i won't do it again but i'm glad i did it right right well trial by fire you got so <laughs> yeah 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 but you know i i was up for the challenge yeah no like... no no you were i was <laughs> amazed at uh the the film you made uh especially with all the the challenges of locations and 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 the bigger cast and all that and stunts and <laughs> uh, honestly i i'm i i'm I, I way overdid it but i just really wanted to um because i'm not a youngster and I haven't made a feature film where I really want to show people what I could do with so little because imagine what I could do with so much more. And right. I think that's with you too, is look what he did for, look how beautiful this film is for such little money. Can you just imagine if you actually gave him a big budget, what he could do? I mean, that's, to me, that's filmmaking 101. So, so I was really excited to be part of the challenge with you and Mike Conway. And uh, you guys are great guys. And um, I feel like we're a little club now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I wanted everybody to make sure you come out and see the film on the Galaxy Theater start, starting um, January 20th, the 22nd. Red Carpet Night is January 21st. Yeah. And Red Carpet's at 6 p.m. The showing of the movie is at 7. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And uh, hey, you know, you, you got to come because you know what? We'll be there for you. And um, I believe it's uh, uh, we want the support, but um, I believe we made a film that you'll that you will like also. That won't be just that you're going to go to support. So um, I'm well, that's not the, the greatest. Cherry on the top. He made a great film. <laughs> And I'm not a great salesman, so people listening to me, don't go by the way I talk because uh, my film is better than I speak. <laughs> well, I think too uh, with that is most. I was we were talking with our producer earlier, uh, Stephen Sebo. Is you guys are geeking out? It's like I think sometimes the most creative people are probably not the most well spoken. They just they're so in their head that they don't really think about you know they're thinkers. They're not talkers. You right. know. I, I need to be less of a talk, <laughs> but this is super exciting for me. I can't wait to see it. I will be on the red carpet and I will be there to support you. Uh, like you have supported me in the past and I'm just excited for all the performance. Donna Fisher's in it. Um, uh, there's just so many, there's such great talent in there and the movie looks just absolutely gorgeous. And I'm so excited. We got to have this talk. Yep. Me too. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very thanks. much for letting me be on on this. Oh, absolutely. And check out House and Time. And of course, once he gets distribution, uh, you can see it another time. <laughs> so don't forget to support your local filmmakers. It, no matter what state you're, you're in, you know, we're here to support each other. You know, I, I do this show because I like to reach out globally. Anybody wants to talk about their movie or whatever. And also, there's also a previous interview right after Mindy started filming House in Time that we're going to start uh, putting up and then uh, really pushing this because I really feel like, you know, if, if we can't do this as a, 
as a group of people, then, you know, I don't know what, what we can do because this was big. It was such a big thing that you did. It was just amazing. And, you know, it was a lot of work, but it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I've probably been to, I or try to go to at least like 90% of all the local premieres and showings. Um, now, if, if a filmmaker has put out two films and they both weren't good. I may not go a third to their third film, but I will at least go to their first and second film usually. And, and um, um, so I usually turn out for those. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, support your local filmmakers, wherever they are. I will support you globally. I will watch your films. I'll VOD your films or whatever I got to do. Uh, and I hope that uh, we all do that for each other in the future. So this is Brenda Daly and I've been excited to talk to Dale Nevin and his fantastic movie house in time. Um, come and join us. Thanks a lot, Dale. Okay. See ya. Bye. <laughs>